What's up you guys? I hope you're having a good one. In this video you will learn about Next.js project structure. Understanding the project structure is foundational for building Next.js applications. I should also mention that this video is part of my Next.js crash course. I'll leave a link for the full course in the video description, so be sure to check that out. If we haven't met before, my name is Tuomo. I'm a Finnish web developer with over eight years of experience working professionally in the software industry. On this channel, I upload weekly videos and tutorials about modern web development. Make sure to hit the subscribe button below and let's get started with the video. To get started, let's first create a fresh Next.js application. And we can do this with a tool called Create Next App. So I have my terminal open and I'm gonna type in yarn create next app and then the project name we want to use. So let's give it a name test project one. Once the tool is finished running, I'm going to change into the directory and open the project in Visual Studio Code. So now we have a fresh Next.js project open in Visual Studio Code. And let's take a look at the project structure. And let's start with the files that were generated. So the first is the .eslint.rc.json. So Next.js comes with eslint and this is the eslint configuration file. Then we have the git ignore file which defines all the files that are ignored by git. Then we have the next config.js file and this is the Next.js configuration file, as you might guess from the name. But uh, right now we don't need to make any changes into this and we don't have to worry too much about this. Then we have the package.json file, which has all the dependencies of this project. And it also has the uh, scripts we can run. So right now we can see that our dependencies are Next, React and React DOM and dev dependencies are eslint, eslint config next. So as I mentioned, next.js comes with eslint, that's why it's required here. And then we have this uh, scripts block also, and we have four scripts here. The dev script is running the next dev, which is the development server and which we will be using when we are developing the application. Then we have the build script, which builds the files for production. And then the start script starts a server that uses the files generated by the build script. And then we have the lint script that runs the eslint. So let's actually try to run our development server with this dev script. So I'll open up the terminal and I'll run yarn dev. So it says that the server is started and we can find it from localhost 3000. So let's try to open that up. Great, our application is running and this is just the default boilerplate that comes with create next app. Great. And then we have the project readme file and the yarn log file. Next, let's take a look at the folders we have here. So first we have the .next folder and as we can see it's ignored by git and this folder is generated when we run the dev script and our Next.js application is actually served from this folder. So we are not going to make any changes in this folder uh, since it's generated and we don't have to worry about it. It's just good to know that it's there. And then we have the node module folder that holds all our dependencies. And then I'm gonna jump over the pages folder and we will come back to that later. And Next, let's take a look at the public folder. And this folder is for uh, publicly available assets like uh, fab icons or images. Then we have a styles folder. So this folder has CSS style files that are used by this default application. We can place our CSS files inside other folders too. And create next app just places all the style files inside this folder by default. And then we have the pages folder, which is kind of special folder in Next.js 
because all of our pages will be placed inside this folder and it also defines the routing of our application. We will talk more about routing later on, but right now all we have to know is that inside the index.js file we have all the code for the front page of our application. So if we wanted to make changes to the front page, we can do the changes inside here. So let's for example modify this title text over here. So I'll replace this with like so. And now I save this and I open up the terminal and I ran the development server which was done by yarn dev. And let's see this in the browser and we can see that the page was updated so it has the new title. So that's the file we want to make changes if we want to modify the front page of our application. Then we have the underscore app.js file. So this file is used to initialize pages in Next.js. So basically this file is a wrapper for all pages. So because it wraps all the pages, it allows us to do things like persist layout between page changes, keep state when navigating pages, uh, some custom error handling and adding global CSS for example. So what it does is that it gets a component as a prop and this component is basically the page that is being rendered and then it returns the component. So we can add our custom code inside this component. And last we have the API folder. This folder is for Next.js application API routes. And API routes is something that we will cover in another video, but in the simplest terms, you can create API endpoints to your Next.js application by adding files inside this folder. Now that we know how to create a Next.js application and how the project structure works, we can dive deeper in the next video. You can watch the next video over here.